Hey guys, this is the Scholar General Mo Jian Dian Bing. So today we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite weapons ever. You guessed it, it's the Dao, the Chinese Dao. Uh, now, one of the most characteristic features of Dao is that they have a, either a slight or a more drastic curve from the handle to the tip. And I want to talk a little bit about how they got that curve. Kind of the basic, most general explanation that you'll find out there is that, you know, the Mongols are the explanation for why Chinese Dao are curved. Basically, it's like, you know, Chinese Dao used to be completely straight, but, you know, the Mongols came in and then Chinese Dao were curved. And while that definitely has some truth to it, it's a little bit more complicated than that on the ground and in the details of history. I'm only going to talk about the first sabers and how this kind of curved saber gets to China. So, the earliest type of saber that we have is what's called a Turco-Mongol saber. And they, the earliest examples of this come from the Avar Khanate. Now, Avars were like a steppe people, and steppe peoples in general have a lot of cavalry, and having a curved blade can be useful in when you're on horseback because your blade can slide past enemies you know, as you're cutting and all this other stuff. So, curved blades are frequently associated with horseback and the saber in particular. And this is part of the reason why it's called, you know, Turco-Mongol saber. And these, um, in the Avar Khanate, the earliest Turco-Mongol sabers that we find come from like the 8th and 9th centuries um, AD, which kind of predates the Mongols by quite a bit. Like the Mongol Empire and all that stuff comes way later. But... It's still called the Turco-Mongol saber anyway, because the Mongols really like this type of blade. But before we get completely to the Mongols, let's take one step back and talk about because um, talk about how this design or a curved dao or saber got to China. One of the earliest um, forms of evidence that we have for curved swords in China actually comes from a painting by a famous northern Song dynasty painter called Li Gongning and he paint he has this one painting called uh, Mian Zhou Tu which depicts a um, a Uyghur, a Turkic person, a Uyghur general submitting to a Tang dynasty general. The, the Uyghur general is wearing a very curved saber that has a very Central Asian style hilt we need to be careful with the painting because the painting depicts events from the Tang Dynasty, but the actual painter lived in the late 11th century. So we can't, and the, when he's depicting this, he's not really depicting things as they would have been in the Tang Dynasty. He's actually depicting things more like what they were in his own time. So this doesn't mean that they had curved swords back in the Tang. It means that, that, um, this, at least Li Gongling, had been exposed to curved swords by the, his time, which was in the Northern Song Dynasty. One of the dynasties that was in power during Li Gongling's time was the Liao. So, during the time of the Northern Song, China did not control what's called like the Central Plain, all of the Central Plain, and like the area around like modern day Beijing and some other areas in Northern China were actually controlled by a different dynasty called the Liao. But the Liao dynasty was a little bit different than the Song dynasty because the rulers of the Liao came from the steppe. They were actually the Khitans, or like a proto-Mongolic people. They're kind of related to the Mongols, but they're not exactly Mongols. And they also, the, the Khitans had this steppe heritage and they had extensive contact with other steppe peoples like the Uyghurs or like, uh, Jurchens and other and Xi and other groups that um, lived out on the steppe. It shouldn't be too surprising that we do find some curved sabers the, in some Khitan graves. However, we have to be careful because not all Khitan Dao are like that, and many Khitan swords are actually very similar to Song Dynasty swords. So, although we do find some curved swords from the Liao and also the Jurchen dynasty which came right afterwards um, this doesn't necessarily mean that like it's the most all Dao are like this or whatever but it's important to note that both the Liao 
and the Jurchen Jin dynasties, which controlled that kind of northern area of China, had these curved Dao before the Mongols ever conquered China. After the fall of the Jin, and with the Mongols conquering them, and then the Mongols moving on and conquering the Song, there we get to see how the, the Mongols, it's not that they brought the curved saber to China, but by their conquest of all of southern China and northern China and a lot of other parts of the world, they kind of really make this curved sword, this saber, much more common and popular. So, in conclusion, I just want to say that, you know, the Mongols were influential in making the curved Tao become like the standard in China, but they weren't really they weren't the ones who first introduced it or invented this the curved saber. Alright, that's all for this video guys. I'm making more videos and hopefully they'll be out soon and thanks for watching and please subscribe.